Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity. Today's topic is going to be um, kind of like a twofold, like um, who my greatest teacher was. Um, and, you know, Roberta would more say her students maybe might be her greatest teacher. Um, Absolutely. I mean, what people who are perceived to be in the margins or on the fringes or perceived to be a burden mm. or disabled, what they can teach us and the authentic lessons that they can teach us about life, about spirituality, about ourselves. But I'm gonna kick it over to Sherry because she has a great first person experience as a mom of a son with Down syndrome. All right. Well, everyone, first of all, thanks for joining us on our video and stopping by. I'm Shari. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and I'm going to go over a few things on my list of um, Nathan being my greatest teacher. When, when he was born, I never realized that having a son being born with Down syndrome, I would learn so much from him. And he truly has been my greatest teacher out of, you know, any academics, any life lesson, he is the golden apple. Um, and, you know, having a child with special needs, the first one on my list is patience. And they're not necessarily ordered in any specific order, but that's the first one that had come to my mind. And learning patience, um, because it's really on their terms, not yours. <laughs> um, nope. So I've had to learn patience um, in that things are on his time and not mine. And if I want to go somewhere, I know I need to stop propping him about 20 minutes ahead of time when he was younger, maybe even longer to get his shoes and socks on. Or I would just have to put them on myself so we could go. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Well, that's one of the great lessons that I learned from my students all the time is patience and following their agenda, not my own. I know what the IEP says and I know what the curriculum standards are, but they don't. And they don't care about my agenda no. or they need what they need and they, they will learn in their time. And it really, really taught me how to be in the moment and appreciate the moment. The, and in, in like always be ready for um, that window to open. Right. And being in authentic community. because they live an authentic self yes. all the time. And it's all, such, every moment. Yeah. All, every moment. It's amazing it's, to watch that. Yes. It, it's so liberating to be with, um, especially as outside of my teacher role. But I, I also have relationships that are more friend-based re relationships with people with disabilities, and it's such a it's such a liberating way to be. They are authentically happy. They love you for who you are, not what you can do for them. Not they don't care about your car, your house, your or how much money you have. Mm -mm, not at all what what they, they do care if you're inside you right if you're a good person or not right even if you're a bad person too <laughs> I mean there's there's been some people that are pretty selfish I've seen who um receive the gift of love from somebody who's again I'm gonna say perceived to be disabled because mm -hmm. they have abilities that we, that, don't. that we don't because we're 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 moving we're in the hamster wheel earning money we're caring we you know we have to care about like mm -hmm. appearances and and what other people think it's so it's such a burden to be typical <laughs> and it's so liberating to be uh, to be different mm -hmm. and to be perceived as different because mm -hmm. you can and you can laugh as loud as you want you can dance like a wild maniac and and really enjoy the moment and I, I can't stress enough 
how people with disabilities have taught me to live in the moment and stop worrying about tomorrow, even the next hour. Just right. be here now. I, I notice one of the things I always forget to do when I'm with my friends with disabilities is take pictures. You know why? Because I'm not worried about looking back on the moment I am in it. Right. That right there at that moment, authentically enjoying dancing, singing, laughing mm -hmm. as loud as we need to. Absolutely. And another thing that I've learned um, in having a son with Down syndrome is they are so much more that we are told they are. Meaning, you know, here I am having a son with Down syndrome. People are like, oh, I'm sorry you had a child with Down syndrome, all this <laughs> the stuff and oh, it's so really cool. been one of the greatest gifts of my life yeah, truly. um I've, I've heard it called the lucky few mm. the lucky few what a blessing to be gifted a child with disabilities um and and all of the lessons that come with that if you're it, you just all you have to do is be open to it and be still for a moment and stop worrying about the outside world and turn inward. Um, that's another thing that I've noticed about people, again, who are perceived to be disabled. I, and I hate people do air quotes and look what I just did. Um, oh, well, <laughs> I'm being authentic. Um, is that they're far more spiritual than we give them credit for. And a great example of that is my friend, an adult woman with Down syndrome, she has a very, very personal relationship with her God. And I'll, I'll ask her, hey, what were you doing? And she'll say, I was talking to Jesus. He stopped by for, to have a dance party. Yeah, my son has similar um, things like mm -hmm. that, even when it, he was super young and would have no reference to very that. Very personal, mm -hmm. very authentic. I'm going to use that word again, authentic. Yeah. It's not manufactured or dictated by any dogma or any specific religion. It is purely a spiritual connection. No. Um, I don't think they can live in any type of dogma. No, no. And, you know, I sometimes got frustrated with religion because they sort of, it, maybe not every church, but I've sort of seen um, people with disabilities sort of like pushed off to the side or marginalized or pushed into the corner when really they live there. They can teach us how to live a spiritual life mm -hmm. and have, they have taught me, my, my relationships with people, with adults with disabilities have taught me to be more spiritual and more open to spirituality. And it has enhanced my, my, my spiritual walk through this world. Um, so what did we learn? We've learned patience. We've learned to be authentic, authentic. and not care what other people think. Right. And we've learned to be spiritual and to tune into whatever your belief system is, is okay right. because it's yours. Absolutely. And, and you're, you're, oh, and the other thing is living in the moment. Mm -hmm. You're not worried about, I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about next week. I'm here right now. I'm laughing if I want to. I'm crying if I want to. Dancing if I want to. I'm, I'm hugging the people that I love without reserve or, or care. Well, I heard a great quote, and I don't know who owns the quote, but um, be you because everybody else is taken. I've heard that attributed to... Um, Dr. Seuss. Oh, okay. I'm not sure who said it, but I know it was set up my son's graduation. And I was Dr. like, Seuss oh. or Oscar Wilde. It's I'm funny. Sure. I say it a lot. Be, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Right. Yeah. And, and, and one other. Because it's already a sherry. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes with the zooming, I can't always hear when you're ending. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, and the other takeaway um, and being a mother, um, I don't know if this is true in being a teacher, but I learned who I was made out of having a child with special needs. And I don't know if that's true from a teacher perspective. It, it is on another level. 
<laughs> I find myself unpacking things, it, um, attributes of myself that I had packed away. I, I put those things away because they weren't useful to myself, but they definitely, definitely inform my teaching practice when I'm when I'm dealing with students, especially the students who are, um, we call them parfaits because they have layers and layers and layers of, of difference. And um, I, I'm not gonna say need, but they have layers and layers of difference that you just keep uncovering the things that they can do and the things that they know and the insights that they have so many times, especially, I, I, you know, I look deep into the eyes of a child who's nonverbal. I'm like, what do you know? Yes. Because I, I know that you know things that I don't mm -hmm. because the world doesn't think you're there. Yeah. It's because you can't speak and interact. They don't think you're there. So they're going to like, they're going to reveal things that they hide. Yeah, there was a physical therapist or an occupational therapist that Nathan went to when he was younger. And she was amazed how him and I could communicate without saying a word, but she didn't know that I had hearing loss as a child. So I lived in a very silent world for the first 10, 11 years of my life. So I can communicate on that level um, with my son without having to say anything. And she was like amazed by it, but that oh, was so only- so much yeah. is communicating nonverbally. You know, it, again, if you could just slow yourself down for a moment and be present, it, the information is there, the connections are there. Absolutely. It might not be what you expect. It might be just like a moment playing on the floor or, um, you know, um, a, a, a eye contact and a giggle. It, the communication is there because we're all human beings and we all have something to contribute. And we all have a, some kind of spirit, whatever you believe in, that makes us human and makes us alive. So um, keep, keep those ears and eyes open, keep that heart open and you'll, Absolutely. you will learn these, with, that we've been blessed, especially Sherry, we, because she gets to be with her son all the time. I have to, after a while, say goodbye to my students right. and, and turn them over to someone else. It's <clears throat> right now it's the end of the school year for me. So I'm feeling kind of wistful because right? I'm, I'm releasing my, my precious students to another teacher and trying to communicate to them all that they are and all the wonderful things that they have to teach. And you just, if you just, just open up your heart, open up your spirit for a moment and, and be in that moment with them and you'll, you will, you'll learn. Yeah. And just be open to getting to know people with disabilities because you will learn so much. Just, just be present. And, Absolutely. and you won't regret it. Not for an instant. Oh. All right. So if you like our content, please, please like, share, and subscribe, hit that like button, help us get out into the YouTube Tell universe. I will put a link down in the video. Roberta and I also did a TED talk, which we will put that link in our video Absolutely. description so everybody can watch that. But please help us get out into that YouTube universe by hitting that like button, bell notifications. We do weekly videos on Saturdays. If there's anything you want to hear about, yeah, let, please drop, comment drop down comment. below. Don't be shy about dropping those comments. We would love to dig deep into another topic yeah. that, you, that you're interested in so that you can tell all your friends that Bridge Builders of Diversity clued me in. <laughs> and hashtag greatest teacher. Absolutely. In, hashtag down. greatest teacher. Yeah. It's not me. <laughs> Close. All right. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. And thanks for coming by. Bye.